CataractCoach.com. A new graduate performs FACO CHOP. So great job by this young surgeon, and certainly you can achieve this too. So our guest surgeon here is Dr. Pedro Simones from Portugal, and he's doing cataract surgery. He's a new graduate, and a few eyelashes in the way, my friend, but you know what happens to the best of us, me included. So there's the incision, a little short for my preference, but it looks like a good incision. Let's see, the Rexus Tripen Blue Dye obviously was used to stay in the capsule, and we'll get this Rexus done. Video is being shown here two times normal speed. So again, it's not a horse race. We don't care about the speed. We just want to teach you as much as we can in a short period of time. So you can see Rexus looks pretty good size, making sure the whole thing comes across and doesn't get amputated there. And I try to keep that a little bit more primary as you're doing this. See the three lights, the light reflexes? You want those in the center of your cornea, almost the whole case. A little bit of oil in the tear film. That's probably because of the draping issues there. Again, just some copious bounce salt solution will help with that. Little hydro dissection here. Hard to see the um, fluid wave because this lens is quite opaque. But a lot of that liquefied cortex, look at that already coming out. So then the lens does rotate very nice. So this is going to be a pretty dense cataract. Faco probe going inside the eye. And let's see the technique here. Cleaning up some of that lens material. And looks like a, what, a vertical chopper. And FACO probe going nice and sub-incisional space, nice and deep. And a combo chop, so kind of horizontal, kind of vertical chop. Very nicely done. Good separation. Didn't fully propagate because it's a very dense fibrous nucleus. So rotate 90 degrees and then chop again. So now more of a horizontal chop getting around the lens equator there. That's good. Now notice how they're still kind of connected in the back. So maybe chop off a small fragment. That's about an eighth of a nucleus. And you can try the other one as well. And so in a case like this where it's d very dense, you're going to get that fibrous kind of attachments on the posterior plate. Now, look at the eye position. I do a little bit more effort to keep the eye back in primary. See the light reflexes, the three lights from the microscope? You want those basically in the center of your cornea the whole time. So rotating the nucleus here and faker probe going in, chopper going around, nice around the equator, horizontal chop. Beautiful technique. So this is very impressive. This is a very talented young surgeon. You can certainly learn FACO CHOP as well. It just takes a little bit of practice. Now, how do you get into it? I haven't done a FACO CHOP ever. I've only done Divide and Conquer. Well, the first step is to go to Stop and CHOP. So create one groove down the middle, make your two halves, and then bring up each half, and you can try to CHOP each half more at the iris plane, so not necessarily in the bag. Now look there, you see a nice little dense endonucleus right there in the very center. And so that's where the most uh, amount of density is. So chopping this more, again, you don't get the initial chop, that's okay, just take your time. Reposition the lens, uh, a nuclear half, and then you can buzz it again. That's the densest part right there. And so you wanna get that occlusion. Remember, using the FACO probe's occlusion to hold the nuclear piece as the chopper helps to split it. And so here, what would I do? I'd go after that dense piece right in the middle. So once you get that split, then you'll get the two halves to be a lot more manageable. And going around the equator again. So beautiful chop technique. You certainly have learned that well. Again, look at the position of the eye compared to your video screen. It's pushed off to the side. You want to keep the eye in primary the whole case. So this is very, for your level of training, this is fantastic. You are doing great. I think you'll do even better in the future. And I look forward to seeing your videos a year, two years, or five years from now. And I think you'll be an absolutely amazing surgeon. But to learn FACO CHOP in your uh, surgical training, wow, that's fantastic. So if you're a recent graduate and you're already doing FACO CHOP, I'm already impressed. For reference, in our program at UCLA, historically, out of the eight residents trained per year, one or two could learn FACO CHOP during residency. Um, the others were very good at divide and conquer or stop and chop. But so... 25% of our graduates at a pretty good program could learn this during residency training. The rest would have to pick it up a little bit later in their careers after the culmination of training or residency. Removing the visceral from behind the eye, well, very nicely done. Wow, this patient's going to be so incredibly happy. You're taking this patient from terrible vision to fantastic vision. So very nice result here. I commend you. Beautiful job, Dr. Pedro. And keep up the good work. And just Keep those few pearls I gave you in mind about keeping the eye in primary, maybe adjust that incision a little bit. But you know what? I really like your technique, and I think you're a fantastic surgeon. Thanks for sending the video in, and let's send your video too. Here's post-op day one for this patient.
bow. Immediately on day one, nice looking clear cornea, lens in good position, and a happy, happy patient. So if you want to learn phaco chop, do it. I'm going to have a whole series coming up of a curated playlist to teach you, to take you from divide and conquer to phaco chop by watching and learning from 10 or 12 videos in a row. So the curated playlists are coming up in the very near future.